jumping on board. Everyone ready to go, people? We're happy. Let's go. All right, guys. Welcome to another webinar, another Pinnacle webinar. Um, first and foremost, before we get stuck in, let's welcome our new members to the community. Everyone wave. Give them a nice welcome. So there's a long list here today. We've got Dustin, Jim, Pat, Mitchell, Jason, Cam, Claire, Trevor, Ankush, Paul, Jody, Jack, Albert, Josh, Barry, Maddie, Vanessa, Ben, Yasmin, Dimmy, Karen, Liam, Grant, Will, Alan, Jack, Cheng. Fucking nailed that. I did very well. Um, guys, welcome. And most importantly, these seminars, guys, they're here for everybody. Whether you want to utilize them and uh, be part of the awesome topics that we have like today, which we're going to be talking about setting goals for your business and a lot of forecasting and reverse engineering, come along to them. If you want recordings, reach out and ask, but welcome to the community. All right, guys, let's get stuck in for everybody that is here. Um, first and foremost, I want to make a bit of an introduction here. Jude um, is officially our first coach. Jude, wave to everybody, brother. Um, basically, guys, to give you a bit of a backstory, I told you that we were having a, a coach coming on board. Jude's been working with me for a long time in the background. Um, Jude has been involved with Pinnacle for, what has it been, bro? It's like four or five years, probably, since the beginning, near enough. Um, and yeah, Jude himself, like me, grew a half a million dollar fitness business. I think for those of you who have been with me for a long time, I, I take leveraging this puppy, this baby of mine, very very seriously because of the quality that i personally provide with most of the, the clients uh, that i'm working with obviously one-on-one -on -one. jude has his clients as well but uh, it, it was a it was a decision that just felt right so jude um say a few words to the fam brother come off mute say a few words introduce yourself my man so yeah um as simon said i've i've worked my way up to a half million fitness business and fit fit half a million dollar fitness business in the past um and i've been working in the background with him i'm definitely looking forward to uh being more in the light and uh taking on more more and more clients as the year progresses so yeah yeah, it's, it's good to have him on board. Again, basically, me and Jude, uh, we know each other. We're, we're very, very, very close friends here in Melbourne. Uh, you were based at what, Genesis and Two Jets, was it, Jude? Yeah, Genesis and Jets. Genesis and Jets, yeah. Jim's. Been there, done it, got the T-shirt like me. So there's a lot of value. If you see his face, um, don't be afraid to add him and uh, communicate, ask questions, anything like that. Um, but just a highlight for all of you guys as well that aren't aware, like any of you guys that are currently working with me, and any of you guys that are currently working with Jude, you will always be working with me or with Jude. There is no chopping and changing of coaches, no nothing like that. Basically, as you all know, we've gone through a, um, a busy time of late. There's a lot of people coming on board and um, to continually impact Australia wide. We have a, a map that we have, which we want a trainer in every single gym around the country for us to achieve that goal, which is a big goal. There will be Jude's help, um, which is going to be very, very much appreciated to help impact people. So well done, Jude. A little round of applause for Jude. All right, let's get stuck in, guys. Um, basically, first and foremost, like any other day, Q&A kickstarts. Q&A kickstarts. So with that being said, what have we got? Questions about anything in the business. Now, bearing in mind today, business goals and reverse engineering, setting goals and stuff. This is quite a big one. Um, and there's going to be a lot of like, I'm going to make this quite personal today. Um, not for just the people that are obviously here live attending, but the people that watch the recordings here, you're going to be able to relate a lot to the stories that these guys have that are here live and also the goals they currently have, et cetera, et cetera. So before we get into that Q and a segment, anything about anything guys, let's go. This is great. There normally is. It takes everyone a little second to warm up, right? But it's okay. If there isn't, that's great. We can get stuck in. I, I really don't mind. Sweet. That means we're doing a great job. Okay. Let's get stuck in. Uh, goals for the business at the moment. Uh, let's go. Let's choose one. Tane, what's your goal for the business at the moment? Uh, a long-term goal by the end of the year. I want to be doing 10K a week. 10k weeks by the end of the year awesome uh what have we got uh zach let's choose i'm just choosing people at random here zach what's your goal for the business at the moment bro current business goal is to get to minimum 35 maximum sort of 40 sessions a week okay perfect sherry what's your business goal at the moment 
Hey Simon, um, mine's to get my new trainer on board and to get her booked up to about 25 clients. Awesome, love it. Uh, what have we got here? Jack, Jackie boy out in the forest as well, bro. Great to have you here as always, dude. What's the business goal at the moment for you, Jack? Uh, at the moment, just getting better at what I'm doing. Awesome, love it. Look, guys, the moral of the story is whatever, wherever you are, you're going to have goals for the business. The one thing that I want to do today is I want to highlight how easy it is to be able to forecast for the goals and reverse engineer them to what's needed to obviously make them happen. Um, and then we're going to talk about a lot of resistance, all right, a resistance around achieving the goals. Obviously, to, to get where you've never gone before, you have to do sometimes what you have not yet done. Um, sometimes you have to do a lot of what you have done before, but because, because you've done it so often, it becomes more of a chore, right? It, it's like, oh, I have to like grind again. You know what I mean? Oh, I have to go do this again. So basically what we're going to do is this is going to be relatively short and sweet, but then I think the Q&A will come because I want you guys to talk specifically about where you're at and what you think is holding you back. And again, a lot of people will be able to relate to this on the recording, all right? The more we talk, the more we engage with this one today, because I know we normally, especially me, don't like to uh, shut up very often, I like to talk a lot, and everybody is the same here normally. So we're gonna obviously be very informative with this because there's a lot to learn. Um, so first and foremost, everyone normally has got a growth target to hit. Is anyone currently focused on growing their business? You don't have to be, and not everyone will be, but hands up if you're trying to focus on growing, right? Cool. Okay, now with growth targets, does anyone not know the, the, the what, what's the word? I'm having a brain blank. Does anyone not know what reverse engineering means? Anyone not know what that is? I'm glad. Okay. First and foremost, creating what we call, a, oh, Alex, there you go. So, Reverse engineering, dude, this is actually huge for you, Alex. Basically, reverse engineering is this. I want to grow a six-figure PT business. It's going to require me to get 40 sessions a week at 60 bucks a session, $2,200 per week, reoccurring income, fully booked. That's it, right? When do you want to achieve that goal by, Simon? Well, I would like to achieve that goal ideally in the next 10 weeks. And a lot of people, it's very interesting whenever we have new guys jump on board, a lot of people think like, what do you mean 10 weeks? You can't do that in 10 weeks. Well, I've had people do it in as quickly as two weeks from scratch. You can, whatever the date is, and you always want to give yourself a buffer. All right. So if you've got any note caping capability right now, I would like you guys to do this. Just do this now. There's nothing to lose from this, only the game to give you clarity, right? Write down, and I'll give you 10 seconds or 20 seconds to do this, what your main goal is for the business, especially if it's growth. All right. And what's this here? Um, no problem whatsoever, Sue. No problem. What your main growth goal is and the time in which you want to achieve it. Now, bearing in mind that we can achieve these goals quickly, very quickly, because we have everything that we need to do so as part of Pinnacle, right? So take 10 seconds or so, write down your goal, how far in the future you want to achieve it. And then we're going to break it down. All right. Now, this is obviously personal, right? this stuff. All right. A few people have told us their goals, but I'm not going to ask anyone. I want you to just write this down. and We're going to reverse engineer, right? So, for example, if it was 10 weeks and you wanted to add 40 sessions, that would be an average of four sessions per week that you would need to add to your business with no drop-offs, correct? With no drop-offs. So, therefore, we need to market lead generate book in consults and calls in order to be able to guarantee with your conversion rates all right your conversion rates are what you currently got to obviously get your return right to get your return so for example i mean someone's getting uh, added four uh, sessions or clients per week I mean, for a lot of people here, you might need to be, if that's a 50% conversion rate, you're going to want eight, right? You're going to need eight consults booked for you at a 50% conversion rate. I would then allow, so you guys can sort of write this down, allow for your drop-offs as well. You always want to allow for drop-offs. All right. We're just doing some forecasting here, Charmaine. Great to see you. Is that new hair you have, Charmaine, there? Is it? You have new hair, do a new hair color. 
yes. Don't worry, uh, really loud in the gym. Oh, okay. You have new hair. You look different. Yeah, I asked my hairdresser to dye as close as possible to my natural color. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Not my natural hair color. All right, this is, uh, we're gonna get back to forecasting. It's not, not hairdressing class today, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, we're just doing some business forecasting. And then based on your current drop-off rates, right? This is, and Jack, for you, brother, as obviously someone who's just come on board, super healthy to do this now. Drop-off rates, all right? Take those into account, all right? Your conversion rates. And then from there, we're gonna look at what we need to do. Has anyone, com has anyone completed these numbers? Anyone want to share these numbers? Tane, let, I think you're open, bro. You told us before your goal. What, what have we got? So what, is it, what, what does yours look like so we can give some guys some clarity on what theirs should look like too? Uh, so my goals, I want to do 10K weeks before the end of, the actual dates before the end of October 23. Mm. So the end of October this year. So that would work out with our price point. It would work out to 155 sessions being done per week. Uh, we're currently at 106 sessions per week, so I'd need to grow by another 49 sessions a week, which works out to one and a half sessions added to the business each week. Yeah, done and dusted. All right, love that. Now, in terms of, have you got anything else you can give us on conversion rates or anything of like what, so how quickly, you, well, you said how quickly that, that that's based on achieving it by October, right? You said? Yeah, yeah. So for, for, and how many did you say you need to sign up per week? One and a half sessions added per week to the business. Okay. Now that there, right there, is very cautious, obviously, for somebody like Tane, who signs up a lot of people, very cautious. I can pretty much guarantee that you will be a 10K trainer by that time, bro. And again, for people who are new or new-ish, this is sort of um, heights that not many PTs get to reach, right? So, but we, I can guarantee that will happen. Um, normally on average you'd be signing up a few more people than that so it's very reserved and that's great uh, does anyone else need any help with numbers if you've got any questions about how to do this because basically that means there now that you've got the plan in place there's nothing that should be stopping you as long as you're reserved with it as well and as long as you go on that sort of cautious side there should be no way shape or form or no possible chance that you cannot hit that goal does so anyone need any assistance with doing this? Otherwise, a hand, if you have completed or you're driving, don't take your hands off the wheel, Clara, um, or you don't need to complete in the, the, the task. Simon, um, sorry, I had to take a quick phone call when you're explaining what we had to do. So I heard yeah, I, I heard what Tane said then, but do we need oh. to, um, you talk about drop-off rates, conversion rates, and like, can you just say what you said again? I'm sorry. Oh. Of course. So the goal of which you want to achieve for the business, mm -hmm. all right, how many sessions that may be or how much you want to add and a time of which you want to have achieved this by, take into consider. So then what you're going to do is divide it. So if you want to grow 40 sessions business, excuse me, 40 sessions fully, but from scratch, you want to get that done in the next 10 weeks. It means that you need four sessions per week, right? With zero drop-offs. So if you were to allow a one session drop-off, that would be, well, you can't, Tash, you can't calculate drop-offs because it's it's a denominating factor we can't control. So I would allow for one per week, right? Allow for one per week. So therefore your four would turn into five. That would be your goal. If you need to convert and your, well, if your conversion rates are say 40 or 50%, let's go 50 to make it easier for my head. Basically, that means you will need 10 consults, right? 50% conversion, half of them disappear. That means you get five new sessions per week. If you want to go to the next level, this is sessions. This is being very cautious that only or that every one of these five will sign up on a bronze. If people are signing up on bronze packages only with you, please communicate with this with me. Why, Nathan? Why do we communicate when you sign up a lot of bronzes, Nath? Can't hear you, bro. <laughs> why we communicate why we sign up a lot of bronzes uh, because that situation happened to me um i wasn't uh closing the the best way i was essentially letting the, the prospect control the close by saying okay um you want to train 
uh, once a week, cool. Or they would say, oh, I'd like to trade once a week before I even gave them the packages that here's gold, here's silver, which one do you want? Which is what I do now. Correct. So again, simple, a little tip here, a little nugget, okay? Sessions are X, Y, Z per week. How many sessions would you like to do? I'll start with one, please. That's not how we want to close, right? So when, because basically, Nathan, it, it's the same way when we always say, and I don't want to go off down a rabbit hole, but super important, uh, again, for, for, for people here, I don't know, like maybe to Grant and obviously Jack, like people in the beginning stages, if you pitch and you offer three prices on one slide or presentation on the same slide, I don't care what people think, you, they will always go for the cheapest because people care about how much money they pay you, not how much time they spend with you. So the pitching and, and stuff like this, Jack 2.1 and 2 that we're going to go through, Grant, if we decide to hit the button as well, you'll see this soon. This will improve your conversion rates humongously. All right. So that's that. Um, and you don't want to sign up gold, uh, bronzes, but basically going back to what I was saying, this is cautious. You've got people here that you're only expecting to sign up on one a week. So if you get five and they sign up on two a week, you're going to hit your goal in five weeks, not 10, right? Does this make sense now, Alex, in terms of like reverse engineering and like basically forecast a goal, break it down to what we need to do, right? Does anyone else have any questions about that? So drop-offs you can't predict, but allow for one, right? Go cautious with how many people you're going to sign up based on, say, a 50% conversion rate. Most people commonly in the industry are around 30 to 40, but some of you guys we know will convert around 60, 70, but that's it. Once you've got that, you should have the time it takes um, and, and the, the data to back it up of how long your business is going to take its goal off. And it's that simple. What do we need next to make this vision turn into a reality? What do we need? To work. <laughs> that's correct. We need to work, right? What do we need to work on or what do we need to work with? This is great. Like, I, again, I, I, I know that everyone here likes to talk. So leads. On. That's correct. When people action plan. Action plan. Yes. So action plan leads. Right. So we're going to go. I'd go with action plan first. It's a great word. Well done, Nate. So we've got action plan. Basically, I, I jumped off on a call with a client in the UK before today. Really successful client. Super successful in fairness. And, and he's a great client of mine. I love working with him. We forecasted and we put basically, we went through all marketing strategies. We gutted everything we're not going to use. We focus on narrowing it down to a loop of four. That's it. But four where we can guarantee he's got 6,000 members in his gym, right? Sky creams it, fully booked, clicks his fingers, became fully booked, right? The next thing is creating an action plan of how we're going to get there, right? We talked about doing a pinnacle wide marketing loop. Don't worry, that, that stuff is in the works, but it's not guaranteed. We will do it when I have time to put it together. We need a marketing plan. So to make this, this growth a reality, and this is where a lot of people without consultants and without mentors and without guidance, without clarity, without the knowledge, they can put a plan together. Ironically, this is what we do at the end of our cert fours, right? You put together a business plan or your level one or two in England or anything like that. Nine times out of 10, when you get educated, you've got to put a forecast together. I aced that apparently. But when I actually went to put it into action, I did fucking nothing. To grow my business i didn't i didn't sign anybody up in the first 10 weeks and it's because i had no idea so we've got to make a plan but then what we have at pinnacle is obviously the strategies in order to put into place to get to guarantee the growth so all right here's a question randomly um for anyone's goals just come up and tell me a number how many consults do you need to uh, to hit your goal tane i'll just go with you so we get a quick answer what do you need a week to hit that goal david Seven. All right. And again, that's on the cautious side for Tane because he converts a lot more than one from seven. Right. But again, we know by October we're guaranteed to hit the goal. This is guaranteed to hit the goal. Right. Anyone else? How many consults they need to, to hit based off your number crunching you've just done? Anyone want to share? Um, I've put 10 consults a week for my. Perfect. Spot on. 10, seven. Anyone else? I'm between seven and 10 myself, depending on the week. Love it, Grant. Well done. Thanks for coming off mute. Seven to 10. Anyone else want to share? I put down nine for myself. Nine for yourself, Jack. Perfect. Guys, I think that's enough there with Grant, Jack, Tane, and, um, and Blade.
the number of, ironically, if when you look in your tracker in that example column is the number, the example column highlights what you should be doing each week. You need to be forecasting forward to be able to hit growth. If you're in a position, it's really important. Like I said, today is going to be detailed. It's going to be a lot of going over certain things you already know, but it is essential. It is essential that you forecast, but make sure that you book in enough consults to guarantee growth. So many people, they might have a wealth of leads, but then they're too lazy to make calls. That happens, like it does. Or some people have all the energy and all the, de all the dedication, all the time aside, time's managed perfectly, calendar's looking amazing to make calls, but they have no leads. We, need, we now need to make sure that the next stages are all in place and then are all executed so that, like Tane, you can guarantee to hit the goal. Tane, there's a lot of accountability for you to hit 10K weeks, by the way, Tane. Now, we need to make sure we make it happen, bro. Um, just to, otherwise, these guys will laugh at you. Um, so basically, look, it's that simple. Question next. to get And again, basic stuff, right? But really powerful for some people here, and I know on the recording, for sure. How many... Tane, calls do you need to make to book in that amount of consults that you mentioned? Uh, if we're still going conservative, say at about like 40%, we go somewhere around 17, 18. 17 to 18 calls. Jack, how many would you need to make to do that? As many as I need to. Yes. That's the answer. Well done, brother. That's the answer. Grant, yourself? Don't copy Jack. Uh, usually working off a minimum of about 30 to 40 calls minimum to actually get those numbers. Okay, spot on. Perfect. Blade, yourself, how many would you do to hit your 10? Uh, it, it does depend on where they come from, to be honest, because I've noticed that when I was getting them from the gym itself, there was a lot more likelihood of them getting booked in and coming on the consultations, and it was closer to a 50% with that one. Um, outside the gym, it was more close to 20 25%. So yep. I'd say you know, 20 to 30, and I, I should hit that number realistically. Yeah, spot on. Basically, guys, I would take that number that you need to have booked as consults, right? And I would treble it for the lead flow or the calls because you are going to call 100% of the leads that you generate, right? That, that should be a non-negotiable. Again, if you've got leads there, we're going to talk about this next. Like I said before, making sure all of these steps happen. I think for a lot of you guys today, today is so simple, but it's going to be very, very valuable, clearly highlighting what has to be done. Because this shit, this game, guys, it's not shit. I shouldn't say that. This game is freaking easy when you know how. It's so easy. And when you have the strategies that we have, uh, like and again, you guys that aren't running them yet, like you, you've got it all ahead of you. But every single person here knows how easy it is to generate leads. Um, so basically, I would go off trebling the number of consults, which is the number of leads that you need to generate. You're going to, then going to make 100% of those calls. And you could probably guarantee that just the law of averages, the law of numbers, you're going to hit the quota, right? What happens after you've got all those things in place? So obviously, it's my job, and I'm not going to delve into marketing today. No, there's no need. It's not a marketing. It's just business forecasting, setting goals for the business. What needs to happen when you do those things? So you call 30, you get 10 answer, and you book in 10 because the way that you're using your script in an unscripted way, right, to come across natural, which is the key, you're going to have a 100% conversion rate, right? Consider the drop-offs or consider, sorry, the no-shows and stuff like that. You're going to have all of these things in place, ready to grow. So what do you need to do next? Leverage. There you go, Nate. Leverage once they jump on, once they've converted. Well, what? What? The, the, let me rephrase. Leverage. What? That? No, that's that's right. But what do you need to ensure that all of these things now are, they're they're in place? What do you now need to do to make sure that the numbers at the bottom at the end of the week, which are going to hit your six month forecasting goal, happen? What do you need to do? It's now time to. Go and execute. What do you need to do? Uh, do the marketing to get the lead flow. Yeah, yeah. do the marketing to get the lead flow. And it's basically stick it like I said the word execute. You need to execute on the plan, basically. So it, that, that, that's what I'm looking for. You've got to go and execute. You've got to go and take the, the, all of this stuff. Once it's booked in place, you've got to follow all your processes. So all your reminder text messages will be automated. That's all done by Calendly. And everything gets sent out. And you show up 
and you convert, right? Sometimes your conversion rates might not reflect the numbers that you've budgeted, but I can guarantee you this. If you hit goals, right, business forecasted forward, you've got goals for the business and you forecast forward for them. If you go and execute them, you will not come short of achieving that goal at all. You won't come short. Now, what I want to do now, does that whole sort of like funnel and plan make sense? Guys, like you've just worked the numbers out that you need. You know how many leads you may, you need. Therefore, we can like individually or soon potentially as a unit start looking at marketing strategies. You know what you've got to do. Now, this is my question to all you guys, and this is where it becomes Q&A based. What are the main things that can pop up? And this is where this, this seminar can go off on a bit of a tangent here. And I welcome it to go on any tangent possible. What are the things that can happen that can fuck this up? Um, um, one of the things I'm... I love that there's loads of people at once like talking about the fuck ups. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Grant, what do you got? So one of the issues I'm actually started struggling with at the moment is the quality of leads coming through the gym that I'm at. So, oh, I, so the people are coming in, the sales staff are selling these leads, getting the conversions for members. Yep passing the leads on and they're not selling the leads properly. So by the time my turn comes up to generate the lead and trying to get them through the gym to convert them as a client, the leads are turning around and saying, oh, no, no, we didn't want that service. So I don't know why the fuck we paid for it. That is very common within good life gyms, brother. It's very, very common within good life gyms. There's a few good life trainers here today. There's also a few trainers here that have left good life gyms and relocated to other gyms because of similar shit like that happening. Um, ironically, what we're potentially looking at doing as well. So with that being said, the systems and processes that we put in place, Grant, to be able to counteract what can be um, the result of something that you cannot control is the best way to say it. So having the gym staff, gym members, or owners of a studio that you're in, or any, you know, underlying factor of you know the stuff that you can't control right in any business whether it's online rental trainer gym trainer whatever right we have processes which you, you've got to pre-frame to these guys so big tip grant you've got to pre-frame to them what you're there to do and if it's been miscommunicated you're there to re-communicate it and basically smooth over what has been made a very bumpy road into a smooth road from that point on with you does that make sense yeah definitely like, obviously, we have, like, product systems, the way you take the consults, the best way to take consults, period. That stuff is, is in play. That, that stuff, obviously, can, can educate you with in the future. But that's an example of one thing. So other people controlling stuff that you can't control. Anyone else? I think there was Ray and Alex, was it Alex as well as someone. Anyway, tell me, guys, what, where can it go wrong? Um, well, a couple of things, actually. One is I have resistance with actually walking the floor. I'll be truly honest. Yep. So I'll, and the people that I have asked, um, like I, I know how to ask them. The people I have asked, it was just like what Brent was saying. Um, they, they're obviously, you, you know, they're either good. They, they don't want PT, um, you know, a PT package. And then the other people that are coming in, it's the same people that are coming in um, that are already working or doing their work um and it just seems to be like I spoke to this new gym person and I said how many members do you actually have she goes I've got about 600 and she goes but it's probably about the same 60 and 70 people that are cycling through yep. each each when she's there and she's there from 10 um 10 a.m through to 7 p.m what club is this the first one or the second one the second one. Oh wow okay so we had you better off in the first right um I think so yes okay look this is what you're saying in summary there is lead generation right so if you're not there's the lead generation that if you're not getting right the approach we will work on together because the approach you cannot fail um when you do this correctly like when you walk a floor correctly with the pinnacle way of doing things with a floor to the floor strategy you can't not have people sign up you can't you can't yeah. it's possible so it's a lot about delivery so we'll speak about that but lead gen right? The predictable lead generation source to guarantee the numbers get hit. All right. There's one. Anyone else? What else? So things we can't control lead gen. So that's, a, that's obviously within yourself. What else? Anything else? Uh, yeah, for myself. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go on, Tana. Yeah. I think you're about to say it. Go on. 
Uh, for myself, it'd be trainers. So like other other people, uh, you know, potentially if anything was to happen, not being able, because I'd need to be able to find another trainer to reach my goal. Um, yeah, so that sort of process. To have to have the amount of trainers to deal with the volume of growth. That's yeah. a good one. There is one I'm looking for. It's not very nice, but it is the cause of most people's procrastination, which is a bit of a tip. I'm looking at many of them right now. That can be the main problem. Yourself. You. It's you. I want to, like I said, guys, I welcome the way that of which this, this, this can go off on a tangent here. I'm going to take it to the deep level, right? Every single person here has direct access to someone in myself or Jude that has been there, done it and got the t-shirt. Most of you obviously working here with me, right? There is a thing called life that will get in the way, right? Life can throw you curveballs. It will come down to how good you are with the bat. I made that up myself. I love that one. I'm very proud of myself. It sounds fucking awesome. It throws you fucking curveballs and it depends how good you are with the bat. It is really good. It gets better every time you say it. Anyway, with that being said, I know every single- Put on your tombstone. Say again. Say again, Nate. So put, it, put it on your tombstone. That's exactly right. I should, I should. Um, so what it comes down to, guys, it comes down to, to, to grit and determination, all right? A lot of, like, you will therefore, so when you've got this plan, business plans are very easy to put together. We've just put some together in 15, 20 minutes, right? What you're then going to be faced with is execution. I'm, I, like, I, me and Jude here at the moment, we, as you guys know, like, we're doing a lot of work with, with course at the moment, right? And the team which we're using to build the course, obviously there's an investment. The investment is a sizable investment. I'm going into new uncharted territory. Take the investment off the size, right? Because for me, we just I, I just do it. I know where there's resistance, there's reward, but there's a lot of resistance. So using me as an example, not singling out anyone here, obviously, there is always where you go into uncharted territory and you want to execute a new business plan that you've never put together before and you've never got close to achieving. You're then going to be faced with you coming square, looking in the eyes, your fears and your resistance to going and making it happen. If there was anything that was so easy and flawlessly easy about this process, then there would be 10 to 20,000 different pinnacle fitness consultings for the hundreds of thousands of PTs out there, but there isn't. And the reason why a lot of people have a lot of resistance, they have a lot of a sort of, you wouldn't say a scarcity approach or a scarcity mindset rather than thinking abundantly, because you can think abundantly, but you can still be forced to not take action because where there's resistance, there's a reward. All this is very natural, I, and, and you're going to be forced with basically the decision of can I, can I go and grab my, my business by the scruff of the neck and go and make it happen? If you, if you have a resistance, right, any point along this journey, best thing to do is to communicate it with your coaches. And obviously from there, you get the answers, continue to move forward. So that's sort of a deeper level. You guys are what will stand in the way of your success. It's, it's up to, obviously, if you're working with coach, all of you guys fortunate enough to be with coaches like that, if you've got anything in here, right, which is a resistance and you can communicate it, I, our job is to take away that resistance so you can execute. And when that's done, right, you have a flawless business plan, which you can execute with and very easily, like Tane is going to show everyone how to create a $10,000 a week business, right? And it, it literally is that simple. I think without that, without going too much further into it, but leaving it on one thing before we do a bit of Q and A about around resistance and stuff like that, because this is the deep stuff that all I'm looking at all of you guys. And I know obviously personal stuff, which is obviously confidential between me and my, my clients. I look at you guys and go, hold it. Like you, 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 there's big resistance there, right? There's all stuff that you've all been through and we've all got it there. Right. But if you can believe guys that this can be achievable there's no reason at all why you can't go and make it happen and it is freaking easy to go to again Tane's level which is a personal choice of his it's not like everyone here needs to get to 10k weeks or 20k weeks or whatever 
but it is easy if you make the decision, you execute, you have assistance there, you use it and you go, your business plan will come into action. And that's kind of my little summary on it at the end with a little bit of a deep and personal note. But has anyone got any talk about resistance that's in the way currently stopping you from hitting your goals? So obviously, Ray, you mentioned there about the lead gen side of stuff. Um, again, this is personal, can be personal. Guys, come off mute. Any, anything that's resistant? Or... Yeah, I'll talk about oh, one. Oh, one. Go on, Alex. Oh, yeah. I'll ask you. Was that me? You go, Alex. You go first, bro. Yeah, I'll talk about one. Um... Everyone knows that I've moved to Australia, um, come from NZ, like that was, you know, um, Bob Proctor calls it the terror barrier and it's, it's the same thing, you know, you, you're hit at that barrier and you're just like, oh man, I'm feeling that again with some um, content. Like I, I feel more confident inside the, in front of the camera, but it's just cr the creation part of it. I'm feeling quite blocked there. And I know that it's a lot of resistance to, I guess, letting the external environment, like letting the algorithms control the, the way that I feel, you know, like my algorithms were pumping and then they just went boom because I moved to Australia and I was like, fuck, ah, should I have done that? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do you so, think the algorithms have bottomed out? Uh, it's just dropped, like it's just dropped off uh, on a few platforms, but then they've picked up in other places. So I guess my, where I'm coming from is not letting the external anything control the internal environment. Um, and that's where I'm going with it is that yeah, that's where I felt a lot of resistance that I was letting this external thing take control of me. Well, um, now it's like everything inside. So regardless of what's happening, the fluctuations of business, because it's business, right? So the fluctuations, I don't give a shit. You know, I'm, I'm going to focus on how I feel every single day and training, doing that internal work, doing that morning routine. That's the shit that gets you on, like on plane with what you have to do. Yes, it's good to have a, like the structure right now that I just wrote down, it's good to have that that vision and that that structure. But if you don't do this work, it doesn't it doesn't work at all. It just crumbles, you know. So yeah, I thought I'd jump on and say that. That is very well said, bro. Honestly, very very well said. This is a prime example, and this is where we get into nitty gritty now. Like I mean, we're going to probably roll this for another twenty to half an hour, and this is where we're going to talk about this. So I want you guys to feel comfortable right? There's a few people here that are fucking crushing it. You know, Tane, look at you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great. Well done, mate. Uh, but look, there's a few people that are crushing it that don't have much resistance. I guarantee that every one of you right now will have some element. And I want to say thank you, Alex, for coming off there and saying that, because it, it's, it's, it, this is what it comes down to. Plan's there. There is no secret. You don't need to go looking for it. Um, and look, with the marketing and stuff like that, I mean, everyone who knows marketing here very well, I mean, it's, most of you guys are six-figure traders minimum, right? So with that being said, it, it all works. It all works. There's resistance within yourself. So Alex, thank you for highlighting that, working on you. I, like for me, I'll go next before Blade. And I've told a few of you about, about this, right? Anxiety will kill a lot of progress right i have bad anxiety with work with what i'm going through at the moment just because i'm in new and uncharted territory right a lot of people here that are i'd say a lot hell there's a lot hell lo loads of you guys car is the busiest she's ever been charmaine looking at hiring a trainer tani's never been as far as he's been before zach looking to go and crush through his fully booked status sherry hiring a trainer jim nakamura jim great to see you as well brother jim looking to take things and scale an online business signed up 20 online clients in january but now faced with big boys stuff big boys and girls decisions to make him to go to the next level cam just relocated to a position where he's freed up some more time in his schedule to go and take more clients and push the barrier further than it's been you're all going into new and trial territory and for me anxiety kills a lot of the time my my head and my my ability to execute which therefore i say it's you it's me do you know what i mean this is what i'm saying a lot of it though I'll tell you about this stuff. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist or anyone, a mental health expert, but a lot of it will be in your head. It is in your head. So as long as you believe, you will succeed. And it is that simple. So that's my input. I think, was it Blade as well? You want to say something, Blade, was it? Yes. Um, I was just going to say about the fact that um, I tend to have an issue with procrastinating a bit too much, I think. Mm -hmm. Like... I, a lot of it is 
the perfectionist side of me. I think if I can't get it perfect, I won't do it at all. And things like doing that video for the onboarding video, I'm thinking like I've got nowhere that's really decent lighting, no one's like a decent background, all that crap. I'm thinking like at the end of the day, I can do something that's, you know, 30, 40 percent decent, you know, and I can upgrade it later down the line, but at least I'll have it for now. But it's 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 making that um what's the word? Just taking action is something that I, you know, I seem to have an issue with currently. And that's probably what's really holding back my progress at the moment is is taking the action. Because like I said, I've got seven or eight consults this week, but I know for a fact a lot of them, just they're just not turning up. And so all it means is that I need to be getting more consults in. Realistically, I need to be getting like 15 to 20 consults in a week if I can. I'm just driving that marketing so I can get them leads and get them consults booked in. But I'm just not taking the action I need to to be getting those consults in to be able to convert them and get that business growing because I did that um I went through all the numbers and mine was quite conservative I wanted to hit uh you know 750 pound weeks basically for me that was my my current next goal I, w- I was aiming for eight weeks but when I calculated um only a 20 percent conversion rate which is what I'm sitting at, at the moment which is a bit low um I need 20 more sessions 10 consults a week one and a half sessions a week average if you do like one bronze one one silver or something like that. Um, it takes me about 10 weeks, basically, theoretically, to hit that number. But obviously, if I'm not getting those consults in, I can't convert anyone. It doesn't matter how good it is. I could have a 100% conversion rate, but if I don't get the consults in. So that's my focus that I need to really start driving in on. But it's like I said, procrastination. I just need to refocus and reorganize myself and get pushed back on. Mate, 100%. And again, it, it's one of these things. I mean, you, you go over that that uh you know, reverse engineer that goal there right you reverse engineer it you're like all i know now i need to do is hit the leads obviously we know where we're at blade with the potential of going into another location it's, tr- it's tricky times because we don't really need to but we could potentially be doing better there with better foot traffic or whatever you know and this is one of those things and i think it's actually healthy to talk about like sometimes if you have guys if you've got a goal but i know that all of you here i don't think you're in a bad place with it if you find that you've set goals like that and the biggest hurdle for you is I can't generate that amount of leads and I've been working with Simon and I know the marketing which we which we use and it works and that it won't work here. It's not a problem with the marketing. It's not a problem with you. It's not a problem with me or you and me as a team. It's your location. It's, it's common. It's common that we relocate people. Do you know what I mean? It's very, very common. So that is also something that can scare people a lot, like having to relocate or look for new opportunities and stuff like that. But again, it's if you can confront these actual tough decisions, anything that provides you resistance, confront them head on. It's very easy to, again, go and hit your goals. Anything else that anybody has got here around their goals that they've got and what could potentially stop them from achieving it. And again, there's many, I think, again, potentially goes off to very personal um legs here of the conversation but anyone else no we're good so the the question is like how do you get over them all right how do you get over them that's that's the that's the next question um alex how do you get over it mate what do you do how do you correct so we talked about the position we've taken the energy right down deeper right and lower now we're going to come out and motivate and action how do you come out what do you personally think that we've got to do next um before i take action like i think as i as i already said that morning routine really helps um i think you have your own morning routine that you do yourself that gets you into that firing line you know like you you know you're ready if you don't do that morning routine you're all over the place um and you you might feel like you're busy throughout the day, but nothing's getting ticked off easily and effortlessly. You're not in flow. You're just you're just going about your day thinking that you're busy, and then by the end of the day, you're like, "Fuck, I'm just completely shattered. I don't know what I've done." So I think that morning routine is important if you start work. Like I used to start um, drive 40, 40 minutes to the studio that I was working at. I used to drive forty minutes there. I used to wake up at four thirty to get that done. You know and And I didn't even used to meditate then. I just used to go in there and just write down how I used to want my day to go. Um, And then from there, try and execute that subconsciously. Um, But now, now it consists like I'm, I'm looking, obviously I work at home. So it's like getting an ice bath. I want to get all the shit. So I know that my morning routine, as soon as I wake up at 
455, I'm straight into that ice bath. Bang, wake my brain up. Holy shit, you know, something so intense, but then really releasing. Everyone's getting into it these days. I've never really applied it that early in the morning. So it's like getting you ready. Let's F and go, you know, like get into it. And then from there, do some meditation, go into a piece of calm or just really calm the mind. And then every, like, I can't even explain meditation. All I, all I know is that it works so good. Like it works so good. You're aligning your chakras, regardless of you believing in that or not. It's the truth. It's not even my truth. It's all of our truth. But, um, yeah, you just align those chakras and your day is just like this. And then you're ticking off things like, holy shit, that's more than I do when I don't do this. You know, so it's morning routines 100% needs to be like for your for your week. So you get to the week and you're like, man, on point. I've just completed everything that I wanted to. Let's go and have a beer. Let's yeah. go and have a feed. You know, let's just go out and fucking do something cool. Yeah. And it's just not falling off. You know, being consistent with it. I had a really good week the other week. Hit Friday and I was like, fuck yeah, go have a beer. And then I just got sick. And last week was complete shit. You know, I just went. Phew. So it was like, now I'm picking back up. I'm feeling that that um, vibration pick back up. So it's consistency with that just makes work effortless. Yeah. I, I, my wife just came back from Queensland. Who did a ret- She did a retreat. It took the phones off them. She gave in her Apple Watch, like she went all in, yeah. I, I don't know, I'd fucking probably have a heart attack if I didn't have my phone for about 20 seconds. But um, I, yesterday I got my phone taken off me because we went onto the, a few of you guys know, my wife did millionaire hot seat yesterday. So keep your eyes peeled on the TV for about three or four week, uh, months time. And uh, she didn't win anyway, bitch. But um, anyway, it, it was taking your phone off you for a while. And that sort of stuff, the retreat that she did, she was three, four days, right? Without a phone. And she she said that this the chakra stuff and this meditation and stuff was huge. She's she she as soon as she came back online, she sent me links to, for three of these. I was like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say? She sent me links for three of them. She wants me to go and do them. But these that's where they really focus on doing that. Like without fail, you you got no choice, you do it. And what what you've basically just said there, bro, is right, a hundred percent. I think um, Aaron there commented in the chat as well, and Sue and Sue as well, like saying that they're on the same page. Morning routine, creating stuff where you're you're ahead, therefore you're more positive. You you've got to create, I think, positivity, guys, and in, in your life to be able to be, to go and take action and execute. Um, getting up, I think that one thing for me, I take away of what you said there, mate, is four fifty five. Yeah, that time is very important. Very important. Most of the guys here that I know very well, you're all early risers like myself. I can't, I can't deal with like not getting up early. Um, but with that being said, again, it gets you ahead. You make the most of the time. Therefore, your pressure and your stress is less, which means you can execute more. Do you know what I mean? Um, on that as well, execution for all these goals, guys, I, I've, I've mentioned this quite a lot recently. It needs to be in advance. Ideally, you've got to be executing in advance. If, if you're trying to chase these goals, if you're trying to chase them each week, right? I've got two consults. You're fucked. I'm sorry, but you, you are. You're screwed, right? Especially if you're in a place yet where we haven't got to marketing and stuff like that, it's completely fine. But if you've got marketing strategies, again, okay, guy in the UK, he'll know who I'm talking about when he hears this, but he's done very, very well recently. Massive breakthrough. But because I think he watches these, yeah, he does. He's got 50 or 55 leads there to call and it's been two weeks and he just hasn't made the calls. I'm like, why have you only got two consults booked in, bro? Again, resistance, you, do you know what I mean? That's what it will come down to. And it's whether, again, you can use community like this. And this is why I wanted to, again, take it to this deeper level today to go, do you know what? Like, I feel like I've got people around me that I can bounce off. And this community that's growing very well um enables people to feel secure so Damo what do you got bro um I just wanted to to add something into this because this might be um helpful for everyone and um I love what we're just talking about there like with like meditation because um meditation is something I've added into my routine over the last year and it's really been like a really big game changer And and I was actually listening to a video this morning so it really relates um 
because when we look at like meditation as well like there's lots of ways like i got all my crystals around here as well and energy and all this kind of stuff but it's really i i believe it's 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 about emotional regulation right <clears throat> so when we're regulating emotion because like going into business setting goals focusing on goals going you know all of these things are going to scare us doubt's going to creep in or it's even going to excite us to a degree so this emotional pendulum is always going to be swinging left to right so what can happen is when we're emotionally swung and it's either way we're we're actually it's a, it's almost a state of intoxication either way right so when we meditate it's that ability to center ourselves again and and it's because when we're either too excited over, you know, it's like someone that's with, um, been overly excited. Then when we calm down, we're like, oh, yeah, that was a bit of a bad idea. I was just too carried away there. So that's the idea, idea there. And it's the same, like, if we're scared and we're doubtful, again, we make poor decisions. Um, so, like, meditation, grounding, having community, all these things allow us to regulate our emotions. We just, you know, hear things calm down. Even, like, the meditation is all about breathing. Um, but I love this quote when I was, um, when the guy was talking about this was, he's like, when you look up, you can't look down, right? And when we are like, again, too excited or too stressed, right? We're only seeing half of the picture. So if we are stressed and depressed and we're focusing on the fear and the doubt and all that kind of stuff, we're not focusing on the good stuff, the stuff that can happen. And the same, when we're too excited, we're not thinking about the bad stuff. So this is that emotional swing, right? So when you meditate and you can center yourself, then your IQ actually increases. So they say it's it's fifty percent decrease in IQ when you're when you're emotionally swinging around. So when we can meditate, ground ourselves, come back to center, then we can see both sides. We can see the good and the bad, and then we can make really good, accurate decisions. So um, I really like that idea. And again, going back, it's like yeah, when you look up, you can't look down, and look down, you can't look up. So we always want to be centered and grounded. So like things like meditation, things like these calls, things like chat and assignment, getting that Voxer, all these things can sort of like realign us back into the middle. Um, and that's why it's really important to do these things when we start to swing, not when we're out of control swinging as well. So anyway, I, this really resonated, resonated with me this morning and uh, it's something I put a lot of energy to because Everything that all of us are doing, Jesus Christ, it's a roller coaster, right? So, and like what we're saying here, it's like we're the only thing that we can really control, and we need to have the tools in place, and we need to work on it just as much as we work on our muscles. We need to work on our mind and our emotions, and if we can stay in that state, we will progress a lot quicker and, and a lot better too. So, percent. It's very, very well said. Very well said. I think. Uh... All of this sort of stuff, these grounding exercises, breathing and meditation and getting into a state of Zen. I was never, I was never cut by that cloth, guys. I never was, but it works. I'm going to tell you it works. And I'm telling you right now, if you can, if you, again, feel like within a sense of community here that you've got people around you. And no, like Davo said, like shit, it's a roller coaster, yeah. And, and it really is. Like it's it's up and down. There's there is going to be ups and downs. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, there'll be times when the pendulum's swinging viciously left and right and there is no center, right? And, and you've got to just, you've got to bring yourself, not let those emotions as well get the better of you as well. It's, unfortunately, over the years, I mean, I've, I've seen great entrepreneurs crumble, <laughs> literally crumble. And uh, it's not even a laughing matter at all. It's actually quite upsetting. And it's all because they let their mind get the better of them. They don't centralize themselves. Um, and sometimes as, as well, like like your clients with you, when you have clients leave, they don't understand that they have everything they write, they need right there with you. And this is why I think it's really important you put this sort of approach we're doing today, as I'm putting into you know me and Jude into our clients, and you guys do it within yours because when you do this, they can actually get on the same wavelength. And if they can find a, cent a, a, a sort of a, a happy center rather than viciously swinging left and right. Every one of your goals, whether it's fitness or business, will come to a reality. And it's that simple. But sometimes it's a lot easier said than done, right? You've got to remember that. But remember that it, all, it always drops, again, with, with you. Um, I think that's a, a really nice sort of conclusion. Thank you, Damo, for that, man. That was, uh, was nice. 
Uh, anyone else got anything at all that they want to add on this? We're 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 well uh, well on time. We're not even at eleven. Um, I just want to say again, Jack, uh, welcome again on board for you, Jim, dude. Hopefully you've taken something away from this as well today, dude, for yourself, um, Grant as well. I know he was here before, um, but all you guys, you know, first timers. Hope you've enjoyed. But again, is there anything else that anyone else has got resistance around achieving these goals that's holding them back from forecasting forward and getting this done? I don't actually do forecasting with people very often. I don't. I don't normally do it. Um, but this exercise today, I think a lot of you will, will have enjoyed doing it and to see that your dreams and your, your, your business goals are really not that far away. And if we can then execute consistently with targets, it's done. And then deal with all the emotional stuff as well, you know, keep grounded, get your daily routine, like Alex says, um, and, you know, stay healthy, stay, stay clean, stay hydrated with not too much alcohol, but there is a balance and uh, that's it. You know what I mean? There's not really much else to it. Anyone else got anything, guys? So it's just a little bit to add, really, I think, to what everybody else was saying, and that is my morning routine has basically gone to crap, and that probably is one of the reasons why I'm not acting as well, because... The thing is, I don't believe in the chakras and that stuff, but what I do know is the fact is that it doesn't matter what word you call it, all that matters is how effective it is. Because I always, it always reminds me when I was back in school and I learned about trepanning, trepanning, you know if you know what that is, where you knock a hole into someone's skull to release the pressure when they got a lot of pressure in their heads. Cavemen used to do that because they thought there were demons in their head and sometimes they'd survive, so they thought, yeah, well, there must be demons in their head. It doesn't, there wasn't demons in their head, obviously, but what they did worked. They just had a different word for it. So yeah. whether or not you believe in chakras, if what they do works, you should use it. So like I used to, I would get up at half five, I'd have a cold shower first thing, go for my half hour walk. I've been slacking on that, but I noticed that when I do those things, I'm more focused throughout the entire day. Because I've just as you have a sleep routine to get yourself wound down for bed, having a morning routine to get yourself wound up, to get ready for work and getting ahead of everything is massively important. And I think that's probably the one thing I really need to just drive back into my my day-to-day -day life because I think that makes a massive difference to just setting yourself up in the day because if you start the day off right it's easier to maintain that level of um of drive throughout the day as opposed to trying to build it up again halfway through the day 100% right I think the, the one thing that was uh that was powerful there with what you said relief the relieving pressure literally like knock a hole in someone's head to relieve the pressure which is all in here like I said your head can get the better of you guys it really can. And I actually welcome the anxiety that I have been faced with recently. I'm very blessed to be, everyone knows I'm a very positive person, right? But I'm blessed to be able to connect the dots and link the anxiety to work. If it was socially anxiety, it would be crippling. It would be disgusting. Anyone that has that form of anxiety, I, 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 feel, I feel for you because anxiety is not cool, but I can relate it to just just going through new hoops, going through new hurdles and, you know, going through new things, literally knocking a hole in someone's skull to relieve that pressure and to let that men mental anxiety go. That's, that's some pretty caveman shit right there. But look, it, it worked, you know, it's all in your head, guys. Keep mentally strong. And like me and, um, like me and Tam like to say, have fun doing what you're doing. If you're not having fun here, guys, there's no freaking point whatsoever. There is literally no point. Now, it might not be fun all of the time. I mean, again, I've said that I'm not having fun some of the time because of the anxiety. I can guarantee a lot of you guys don't constantly have fun. But as long as you remind yourself that it's in here and those demons and all those bad times, they shall pass, you will forecast forward and hit your business goals. So unless there is anything else, I think it's a perfect time to wrap it up. Um, anyone needs anything, any time about mental stuff that you've got blockages in your pathways to focus on your goals, please communicate, right? Communicate because you'll get around it. And a lot of you here, I know, have communicated multiple times. And we are now obviously still here. We're still rocking and rolling and moving towards our goals. All right, let's wrap it. I'll speak to you all on Boxer soon. All right, well done.